here's my Ubuntu machine set up. It's pretty vanilla apart from I can figure my email, change the desktop wallpaper, and install Chrome. But the first thing I like to do is add on the restricted extras. So go to Synaptic Package Manager, open the software sources, make sure yours is selected as followed. Add up download source code. Now I'm in the UK, so normally I just pick that, but I'm gonna let it pick the best server because you never know, there might be something further away that performs a bit better. Let's pick one in the UK. So I'm happy with that, choose that. On the other software tab, which is the next one along, uh, make sure your canonical partners is selected. Again, I've got source code on tick, but make sure yours is the same. You can have a look on the other tabs if you want to, but we don't need to change anything else. What's that down? Okay, we're going to reload anyway in a minute, so let's never show that again. Close and reload. And it should pull down all the latest packages, package information. And after a couple of seconds, when it catches up with us, Right, to get restricted packages, I'm going to type in Ubuntu dash restricted. There it is at the top. You'll notice there's also one at the bottom that's in add ons, but that's a dependency, we'll get that in a minute. So, mark that for installation. Yep. And you might notice just off the bottom of the screen, the bottom one's gone green as well. We're happy with both of them. Apply. And those packages will be downloaded and installed. What this is doing is pulling down all the packages for Java, uh, Microsoft Core Fonts, Flash, load of other extra bits and bobs. Um, I did read somewhere that Chiocwave comes down, however, I've not seen any evidence to prove that that works or installs. That's Java coming down in a minute. Microsoft Core Fonts, we need to accept that and use that license agreement to install them. Okay, that's them in. Now we've gone green. And you see the add ons are also installed. Now, to test that our Flash and our Java works, fire up your browser. Uh, head over to Adobe to test your Flash. successfully installed. And just do a Google search for um, Java test and you'll find a site like this one. Proves that your Java's up and running. It's motion. The next thing I like to do is install uh, screenlets. Anybody who's uh, spent any time on Windows 7 and used any desktop gadgets, it's a similar sort of thing. These are handy little widgets that you can drop on your desktop. So launch Synaptic Package Manager once again and do a search for screenlets. There you go, right in the middle. Yep, mark those for install. And apply. Go. Now I'm only going to look at the ones that get installed by default. You can um, Zoom off around the internet and uh, download a load more screenlets. That's them installed. To have a look at them, go up to uh, Applications, Accessory Screenlets. And it's the first time we've run this, so you'll get that prompt. Would you like to create? Yeah. 
Um, one I tend to use on my netbook is the um, battery. I'm on a desktop here so I don't have a battery, hence the reason it's got a big red X through it. But uh, that gives you your percentage of battery life. This desktop calculator is quite handy, although if it was on my desktop all the time it would probably annoy me. But Here you can pop calendar on your desktop and you can alter it or paste it if it's uh, a bit too bold etc. Another really cool feature is there are various RSS readers. This one by default will point to dig so let's point it at something eminently more interesting. Go to its preferences RSS. Okay, that's it's pointing its dig. Let's change that. Point it at my RSS feed instead. And the URL for that is http colon slash slash www.petnetlive.com forward slash feed dot xml. Apply. Apply. Now what you usually find is the content doesn't refresh for a few minutes, so just to give it a boot, just right click and refresh, and there's a latest feed off my website. Cool, RSS reader. I'm not going to go into every single one of the screenlets on here, but there are various uh, clocks. There's a digital clock there. You have that on your desktop. Lots of monitors. There's a flower there that you can water and look after. CPU meter. And the networking meters I tend to find are a bit hit and miss, but there's loads of other sensors and stuff that you can add on. A search widget. System icons, uh, Tomboy sticky notes. Anyway, that's uh, that's the ones that come down with the default package. The last thing that I want to turn on is Screen Dock because I want to get those shortcuts off my desktop and have them all on my Screen Dock. There are quite a few screen docs you can get, but the one I prefer is called Cairo. So do a search for Cairo Dock. There it is. There's quite a few dependencies for this one, yeah. And that will come down and install. Smashing, that's that installed. And all its plugins, bits, bobs. To initially kick it off, go to Applications, Accessories, Cairo Dock. And when it first comes on, it'll look awful. After a few seconds it should say, would you like me to turn this annoying black background off? Yes please. Yes, I want to see if that's set in. Now, anybody who's ever worked on a Mac, this will be quite familiar. I don't use Firefox, so let's get rid of you. I prefer Chrome, so I'm just going to drag that over there. There you go. Chat client now, I don't use that. Graphics. Shortcuts, stuff that's quite handy. My home drive, of course. Just turn that menu off. Application launcher. Drop and share and rhythm box. I don't tend to use a rhythm box as my music player, I prefer VLC, so. Let's get rid of that. Yep. 
this sound of video as VLC. Drag that down to my dock. And you can scroll left and right to decide where you want to pop it. There you go. So calculate on my music player, browser, home drive, app launcher. Log out on my shortcut menu. Now I'm going to set the dock so it automatically opens all the time. Right click Cairo dock, launch Cairo dock on startup. Now remember I'm trying to get rid of my desktop shortcuts so I want one on there for Evolution Mail. So I'll drag that down on my dock. There we go. I've got email on there now. And I've got no need of those on the desktop. Get rid of them. Smashing, that's me all set up. Don't forget to visit us and watch some more tutorials at www.pnetlife.com. Thank you very much.